Hello and Hello. welcome to Academy Live episode 30. 30. Was that enough figures? Yeah. Wow. Uh, in today's episode, we are going to talk about collapsible reflectors. Things in, like this. Yeah. In and out, we're going to uh, talk about everything you need to know. Uh, how to use them and how not to use how them. How not to use them and which are used, which are meant to be used for what. That exactly. is what we are going to talk about because there is there is actually a lot of things to say about these guys. Yeah, uh, and so it's going to be a jam-packed uh, episode, and we're going to finish up with the ultimate trick performed by David Bishop. Yeah. Uh, on uh, yeah, so I'm yeah. I'm not going to tell the you the ultimate more. trick. Yes, I it's, will perform. It's it. worth yes. waiting. Yes. And if you if you're just watching and you don't like collapsible reflectors. And look at it afterward, fast forward to the end, because you don't want to miss it. <laughs> you can miss everything else, but not that. Uh, and we have a lot of friends, of course, Holly. Hello, Holly. Uh, uh, we need to get you back on, on broadcast. Yep. Sal. Eric got stuck in his keyboard, apparently. Yeah, gbuff, gbuff. Yeah, gbuff, gbuff. Right back to you. Yeah. Uh, Alex, hello from Washington. Washington. And then we have, I love this humor, Pete something. When it's a type something, I love that. It's my kind of humor. That's Andrew's kind of humor. Yeah, exactly. And Jerome, hey son, hey son. And uh, David Sentifanto, thank you so much for the love that you're sending. Yep. We got Western uh, North Carolina here as well. That's a beautiful one. Munich. Yeah. Munich, we got from Dubai. Mm, Thailand. Oh, California. Northern California, Gurneyville. Or whereabouts? Somewhere. Uh, Russian River, maybe, uh, or Bodega Bay, even better. Maybe that's not Northern California. That's kind of still middle. You know that place. Yeah. I know that we have people out there that is afraid of my big tall glass of coffee here. Yeah. And you should be afraid because, <laughs> you know, a lot of electronics and you shouldn't have liquid on tables like this. Yes. So be afraid. <laughs> we Stay tuned. So far, it's gone well, but uh, well, we'll see. Yeah. 30, ep 30 episodes still going. Strong. Shintaru from Japan. Shintaru, our, our friend. friend. Yes, love you. And hello, guys. Uh, Isidro, and we got Michigan, Italy. We got, oh, we got Seattle here. And oh, it's all over. Yeah, it's North really Haverhill. We really should fix that Toronto. map. The map that we, where I we know. show and everyone. And Joachim is here as well. Hello. And we got Korea as well from Seoul. Oh, Napa, near Napa. That's that, now I know where. <laughs> yeah, That's you're cool. really into this with the, all, all the locations. I, it is kind of cool. I and mean, we got Germany, Holland. I mean, it's just and of course, uh, maybe not so uh, exotic, but still so important. Orsta outside of Stockholm. Yes, everybody counts. The great Orsta. If yeah. you haven't been in Orsta, you have to go to Orsta in outside of Stockholm. Yeah, Hamburg, Belgium, and of course Suvland as well. Hello, uh, Montana. Oh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. That, I mean, there's so many people from all all parts of the world, kind of gathering here. together here. Yeah, to listen to us exactly, and, talk about and asking questions, which is something that we really love. Ooh, yes. Questions, we love questions. Please yes. pop in questions, uh, preferably about light, and even more if you have questions or opinions about these guys, collapsible reflectors. Yes. Just pop them in and we will do our best to find the answers. And we had one continent left uh, that was not in yet and that was uh, oh. Africa. But now we got representation from South Africa as well. Thank you, Angela. Angela. Excellent. So there are uh, so many different kinds of collapsible reflectors. Um, and uh, a Profoto have two different sizes. Yeah. Uh, they have the medium size yeah. and the large size. And the large one. Yeah. And, and of course the medium um, is easier to bring along. Yeah, this is the medium size collapsible reflector. Yeah. Easier to bring along. And we will, uh, uh, we will use both medium and large. And show, show you the, the difference and talk about the difference between what they do, why do you need a large one, why do you want to have a medium one yeah. uh, and such. And uh, it, it is really an un uncomplicated uh, light shaper. Yeah. I mean, you, you can bring it along, it's easy to carry, you fold it together, boom, you're, you're done. Um, and you don't even need a flash. 
I no, mean, you can if use you the have, sun. yeah, you can use the sun or the uh, available light. Light from a, from anything yeah. can be can be reflected can be, with those. Yeah. So, that's so yeah. really really cool uh, cool way to start. Uh, it is. It is. It is cool and actually cool and simple, as you said. Yeah. But there is things to know, things to talk about, things yes. to clear out, things to how to how to to place the light. That doesn't matter if you have a flash or not a flash. But uh, with a collapsible reflector, it's really easy to to control that. And we yeah. will talk more about that. And uh, uh, and you can use it to bounce light in them. You can use it to diffuse, or you can use it to block. Light. Yeah. Exactly. It's very versatile. Uh, and, and then, of course, you can use, and I have used, and you have used uh, all kinds of different material. As I mean, we use cardboard or uh, yeah. doctor's coats. Of course, or, in, instead know, of instead of a collapsible reflector, yeah. mean, just to, to reflect light. Yeah. So and exactly. you can use a lot of things, but there there is a downside sometimes because you might get a tint from whatever the uh, the other uh, surface is. I would say you might get an unwanted tint. Exactly. Sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. you want the tint if you have like a exactly like the purple, like the purple tint. We yeah. all know the purple tint, oh, isn't that a beautiful? That yes, we love yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. So the the collapsible reflectors are made not to have any tints except for the colored ones, of course. But if you do not wash your your collapsible reflector, I never tried it, but I suppose you can, you know. Wash them, yeah. if they get dirty, you get a, you're yeah, gonna get a you, you tint. Can, similar to kind of like, uh, do we have any soft boxes behind us? Yes, we have one right here above my head, there. Yeah, good pointing. Without looking. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Good. Yeah. Uh, I used the force. <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 sometimes they can get dirty, so you just use a mild soap. Uh, it, it's the best we kind of. Uh, that you use for your delicates. Yes, yeah. or <laughs> as I do with you. Oh, when you yes. get dirty, yeah. you do some mild soap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, some mild soap solution works well. Yeah. And, and um, um, what else is there to say? There are six different types of surfaces. Yeah. We do have the black one. Yeah. We have a white one. Yes. Translucent one. Yeah. Silver one. Yeah. Sun silver. Oh, exciting. Sun silver. Yeah. And of course, the gold. The gold. Yes. And we're going to look at the, all of them. Yes. How many was there? It was six. like six. Yeah, six different yeah. types. Uh, and and so so you can use anything as uh, reflective, but there is a little bit of technique in there as well. You can refine um, uh, the technique of using the uh, reflector. And yeah. I, I think that the, the thing with the refining is all about. Uh, you have to know what to look for. Yes. You have to know what to look for when you are refining. Yes. Elsewise, it will be just looking like you are bouncing light straight up from, from below, and that will look like. You so know, we got a question a about word. Pro for A1 for Sony. Still don't. I mean, it, 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 the only thing that's been communicated so far is, is uh, first half uh, 2019. That's all we know. Uh, we did have, we get a question here from Richard. Uh, in episode seven, we fired outside with, with the A1 on, on Ken to get blue skies and very. It was uh, to demonstrate how HSS works. I'm very curious how David will light the face from Ken in the same situation to make it not look flashy. Where does he set his light? Of course, he can use uh, a B1 if he needs more power. And which modifier will he use? The situation was sun is shining from the back. Uh, yes. uh, from, from Ken direction, 11 o'clock from the camera and high in the sky. Yeah, it was really, it was a really tough uh, sun. Uh, so the question is if we can, uh, will we have any sunny days? We could go out and, uh, and this actually This is Sweden in February. I know. Oh, yeah. So, it's like because uh, it, it would be the coolest thing would be actually to go out yeah. and and do that and and then just record you and then we can show that clip yeah. when you are doing it. I'm just see what. Yeah. And I know. will. I know what I will continue to keep saying all during all that clip. Use the background. Use yeah. the background. How does the background look? That will dictate how you light your your subject. That is the key to make it not look visual. Uh, sorry, uh, flashy. F look like a flash. Yeah, uh, light. Uh, but we should do that to go outside and record it because yeah. it's. Um, and we do have sunny days details. every now and then. Yeah, so, we, do. So we'll do. we do. So we'll, we'll do that. So we'll we'll get back on on that one. Natural light. How does this work? 
from Sherry, question there. Well, well so, um, uh, well, first of all, all light is basically the same thing. It doesn't matter if the light is coming from a, a pro photo flash or if it comes from a, com uh, a, a burning car. Yeah, burning car, or, or my favorite, the burning cat. A burning in cat in a, in a bathtub, yeah. Or, or, or the, the sun, sun. Or, or, any, uh, or, or a flash from Canon or Nikon and so forth. It, it's the same electromagnetic uh, radiation. Yeah. So, 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 so I would say that natural light is all about how, how uh, it makes you, as the viewer of the image, think that yeah. the photographer hasn't made the light. Yeah. That the light is... Uh, the, the ambient is creating the light, then and it looks like it's a natural light. And actually, Sherry, uh, in our last episode, episode 29, we did talk about uh, a technique which really helps if you want to make it look natural when you're lighting. So I would go back to uh, Profoto's Facebook or Profoto's YouTube channel uh, and then just look at the episode 29 and you'll find us more uh, Good information when we actually yeah. talk about this. Yeah. Um, so um, I actually saw this question not here. It was in an, in another f uh, forum. Forum. Uh, a guy said that flashlight always looks like it's artificial because it's because it's so hard. Period. That was his description of why flash looks artificial mm -hmm. because it's so hard. No, no more uh, elaboration on that. Yeah. Uh, and the, I think that is the main reason that many people think that flash looks too artificial because they do not know that you can do so much more than just, ma than just making a hard, a hard light. Boom. And this is, all, this is uh, actually what we uh, dedicate these shows for, to talk about light, what you can do. Yeah. I mean, because just having a small light source and just banging on a lot of light that will look artificial, but you can do so much more. So watch what we are talking about and the other old episodes and such, and you will get a lot of tips here and there about how, how to really control your lights, not to make it look like it's just a you yeah, know, and simple and, and, flash. And we, we also, I mean, we do give some, some tips, but if you really want to go in deep here, uh, go to Pro, Profoto's webpage uh, under this section, Academy, uh, David has a, a, a three-hour course there, uh, yeah. Fundamentals or, or of Lighting. Or three one-hour courses, if you want to yes. put, put it like that. Exactly, yeah. three one-hour course, courses, where you go through exactly those things. Yeah. How to mix ambient light with flash and make it look natural. Uh, and those are very, very detailed, packed with information. Packed with information, yeah. yeah. And, and you uh, uh, show in studio the, 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 the details on the theory and, and practically how it works yeah and then there's a real shoot uh, in each one of them where yeah in the end yeah exactly where, where we use the the theories and the techniques uh, that we were talking about in the in, yeah. in, in the uh, episode and that specific episode the one with the uh, uh, mixing ambient light with flash that was probably one of the few times when I was really scared yeah because <laughs> we, we were shooting a, a stunt stunt actress Madeline uh, Valbainer, Val yeah. and, and she was uh, uh, part of uh, a movie called Wonder Woman, and so uh, she was one of the Wonder Woman's, yeah, you know, one the Amazons. The, yeah, the Amazons, really dangerous and, um, person. And Anders was really afraid because she was hitting a sandbag very hard, and Anders was really close, and so on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it hurt when it. I mean, she had such punch. Yeah. Bam. Uh, well, um, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so there are a lot of questions. To the qu uh, what is the number of f-stop reflector diffuser? If I want to have a big light source, I can use diffusion paper uh, with more than one f-stop. Well, even a full stop is enough. If you have one f a full stop diffusion, that's enough to create really, really big. Uh, you don't have to go to like two or three f-stops. Um, I'm trying to read the end of the question here, but I can't explain the reason. Less than one f-stop diffuser can't be big light source. Can you explain to me? Yeah, well, so, so it's more translucent. So actually, at, one, at a certain point, the light source it itself or the light pattern will be visible yeah, the on the diffusion exactly. paper. What, is, uh, uh, what I'm concerned about here is the, 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 the f that you're using the word f-stop, 1.0 f-stop. You call them 
one full diffusion, one full stop even, yeah. I think that you can say, but I know that you will not lose exactly one stop from a full stop diffusion. So the, st the stop thing, I'm not sure why they are using those terms, because yeah. I know that, I just repeat, if you buy a full stop of diffusion and you put a light behind it, you won't lose one full stop. If you put it straight on, and as soon as you back it up, there's so much going on that you it's totally impossible to say exactly how much you will lose, but it will not be one full f-stop. So I don't know why they call it that. Yeah. I know um, I have made experiments and tests and you know re measured. Written, measured everything. Yeah. I don't remember them, but um, I have them. I have the, all the measurements somewhere. Um, so your question, I think that the ma the key thing there is that when you have a thinner diffusion, you you are starting to see the light source through the material. And when you yeah, because it, it, if if you have a full stop, normally it the the, the whole material lights up like exactly. a light source so then you and are then you, then, then you won't have any hot spot yeah so if you have a full stop that means that you will not have any hot spot and uh, if you do not have any hot spot that means that your whole area will be your new light source mm -hmm. big penumbras soft light but the thinner material you have the more you will see the hot spot in other words you will have a smaller light source yeah. mm -hmm. and the thinner penumbras and hard, harder lights yeah and uh, Jerome was also asking about uh, his buying D2s to shoot some, uh, to freeze some uh, up here. Uh, yeah, motion freezing. Well, the D2s are fantastic for that. I mean, they are really, really fast. Uh, I think you don't need anything else for that. Maybe you could uh, use the Magnums, the, uh, these guys, the OCF Magnums. Uh, and they look something like this. Um, they are really small and uh, convenient and they, they give you uh, two f-stops extra punch when you're using them uh, with the D2, for example. Uh, so these are really, really good to uh, get extra energy. Why do you want extra energy? Because when you are uh, um, freezing motion, you want a really short flash duration. And the less amount of power you have in your flash, the shorter your flash duration will be. In other words, if you put on one of these, you will, uh, all the light will go in one direction. In other words, more light will actually hit the subject. In other words, you get brighter. Lower. Yeah, so you can get lower on the power. Exactly. And I just have to try this on my coffee cup here just to see, because it looks, it's, if it's that it is just perfect. Yeah, now it's safe. It's <laughs> now you can feel and You can also secure. use the OCF Magnum as a uh, tall coffee mug protector. Yeah, you can. <laughs> And don't try to drink out of this. Uh, and, and, so, so, and then try to kill as much ambient light as possible. Try to get all the ambient light in the studio dark. I mean, if you can work in complete darkness, that's really good. But then it'd be difficult to see. Yeah. And why? Why do you need to? Why do you recommend to kill all the ambient light in, the, uh, in there? Because then, you, then it's the actual the, the flash that freezes the motion. And then there's no ambient light that gives you the t uh, that lights up. Uh, after the flash has lit. Yeah, so uh, you won't object. have any trails from the Exactly, from so no motion light. blur. So now I want to drink my coffee, so I have to This wasn't a good idea. It's, it's hard to get the <laughs> coffee out, so I put this back. <laughs> Maybe I should try the hard box to do that. No. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Um, so, question on group shooting. Uh, what reflectors or light diffusers um, you should use? I, I mean, group shootings, umbrellas are great. Umbrellas is a really easy way to get um, larger light sources. And of course, if you are in an environment where you can bounce light even better. Because then you can use the walls as new light sources. That yeah. is even bigger than any umbrella ever yeah. that can create a really, really big light source. A good thing with, with umbrellas is also actually the, the thing with the, um, it's, uh, it's really easy to carry with you. You, yeah. just, you just bring it together and just walk away compared to a softbox or, or what have you. I mean, a big giant that is a beautiful big light source, but it's kind of tedious to, you know, get yeah. it up and get it down. So the umbrella is a really good thing to use for group shots because they are often quite stressful and uh, you need to be up quick and run. So yeah. not run, would you say that? You need to be up and running quickly. And running. Yeah. Fast. Uh, there's a question here that I really love uh, from 
John Keyes Steenman. What is the best way to imitate a northern light, a northern kind of light with flash, oh. soft and blue? Yeah, that is uh, actually we do kind of that in that in the third episode of the Academy with the how to use the background. Yeah, that's we, true. We're doing that blue thing there, but yep. just to make a, a, a quick answer to that, uh, up, I spent so much time in analyzing um, um, Vermeer, Hans, Hans Vermeer, no, no, Johannes Vermeer, sorry, yeah. Johannes Vermeer, a painter, a Dutch painter who really, he paints uh, a lot of Northern light. And I try to break, break it down into details. So when I have my lighting courses, I'm trying to teach the different parts, what you, are, what you need to, be, to, to think about when you are creating your Northern light. Yeah. And the, a short thing, the, the, the key things with, to create a northern light, a, blue, uh, a big soft light from a window, which is a northern light, no direct sun. That is uh, the background, always that background. The background is key. If you create your, your light on the background as it is, as um, if the light from the window hits a wall in the back, then you will believe that the light hitting your subject in front of the background is actually, actually lit by a window light. Okay? And then you have that blue thing you mentioned. Uh, the, the best way of making a northern light is to have those blue shadows. If you look outside of a window, the sun is on the other way, you have your sky. The sky is really blue, but you often have a more uh, natural light also coming in from from uh, from the horizon and from the clouds and etc. But you usually have some blue light, a blue tint also, and you create the same. You, you create the same thing by creating this big, even bigger light source that is blue. That you have, you can like uh, in a studio. If you if you light up the whole studio with a blue light, very very faint, very very weak. That means that all your shadows will have this faint blue tint. And then you have the rest of the northern light from a softbox or whatever, and the background. You separate the background from your subject and with the blue tint from the third flash. So I would say three flashes to create a really, really nice window light, a, a, a blue, uh, not a blue, but a northern light with blue shadows. Uh, and there is a lot of things to say about that, yeah. how you shape the background and such, but yeah, we don't yeah. have the time for that now. Uh, but I would say that that is key. The background is key. You have to create a background that looks like it is lit by a window. And then put your subject there and light your subject. Cool. Yeah. Um, oh, Umbrella's okay. rules, you are Kim. <coughs> yeah, we do agree. We like them, definitely. What makes Beauty Dish RFI that beauty? Uh, Some people say that beauty dishes are meant for beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> that is why they call beauty dishes. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the the main point with the beauty dish is that it, it it has a, a plate here in the in the middle, which kind of takes away the soft spot or the hot spot of the light. Well, so it, it depends on where you want to go. There's two different schools of that, mm. two different descriptions of the of the beauty dish. Uh, I mean, if I go that route, the plate in the middle removes the hot spot. If you do not have the plate, you will have a flash that is straight mm. on, of yeah. course. But the thing is, when a, when a beauty dish is uh, perfectly aligned, it actually creates a brighter center. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly, at the, so at, the, at the right distance. Exactly, That's so you yeah. will have a hot spot in the center that goes out really, really gentle and soft towards uh, mm. darkness. Yeah. And that is when the, the head is in the right position from the plate. Yeah. Then you will have, because what is happening is that the shadow edges from the plate is growing when it hits the wall or whatever you have in front. And when they are intersecting in the middle, you will have an ant umbra shadow that will create a bright part. You will have a bright spot in the middle yeah. when using a perfectly aligned uh, beauty dish. Yeah. Not, all, not all are, yeah. but when they are, then it will be beautiful and brighter in the center. And I, I know that many people don't know that. They think that you are placed in the shadow of these plates. Mm. But it's actually more bright, more bright in the center of the light pattern from the beauty dish. Yeah. And then also you, you see quite often that people move the beauty dish far away. Yeah. And then it loses all the effect. 
Yeah, then you have... It's just a round light source. Yeah. So Evenly lit, of course. Evenly kinda lit, yeah. evenly lit. And I know that uh, you can also, also, you know, I mean, with a beauty dish, if you tilt it downwards, so we get the brightest part a, 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 bit, a, a bit further down, then you will have a more even illumination of the f from the forehead to the cheek to the, to the chest. Yeah. So you can be really... Uh, really precision. Very yeah. high precision to yeah. really, really get an even illumination, if you want that. If yeah. you don't want that, you can do it the opposite way and so on. So the beauty dishes can be really beautiful, but it, but it is you know, all about positioning and looking. As a photographer, you need to look to see what yeah. you like and create create that and uh, um, use your eyes when you're lighting. There is no position to put a light up that, it, that works for everyone. You have to always look change, and, yeah. and uh, tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you think? Should we go up and, uh, and take a look at... Uh, we got all these uh, reflectors uh, lined up. Yeah. And maybe we, we have Capture One up and running. Let's do that. And, uh, and let's uh, try first uh, some different surfaces. Let's do that. I just take a sip of my coffee. Yeah, you make a coffee, but you don't drink it. Mm. And I think my, my microphone takes up all the... Drinking sounds. Drinking sounds. So I turn the computer so we can see a little bit what's going on. The, I didn't lose any connections, no? So, uh, yes, which camera is uh, live now? Is it the big one? Oh, that one. one. Hello, camera. It looks, yes, yes. it looks live. And we turn on. So we have all these ref uh, collapsible reflectors. So Anders, which one do you think we should start with to talk about? <coughs> Why don't we start with the, uh, the odd one, uh, the gold one? The gold one. As you can see here, we have uh, six of them. Oh, you can see, uh, I think the, you see one, two, three, four. It's okay, you see four. Uh, or yeah. Or four, five. You see the edge of the sun silver as well. Yeah, okay. So let's bring out the first one. The golden, the yeah, dreadful. The white one, that was the gold one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <'Cause the laughs> that was the whole point of <laughs> putting them in this order. <laughs> Anders, I'm so sorry. You knew you should have written notes here. Okay? Yeah. The dreadful golden. The dreadful golden one. Yes. Uh, I know that many people think that the golden reflector creates a kind of ugly uh, light because it's just golden. It's like uh, kitsch. It's like uh, who wants golden light in someone's face? Well, the thing is that I don't want that either. I think this is actually kind of ugly. But there's a personal thing. I mean, some people really love it. Uh, so, the golden reflector. It is a shiny surface, which, in other words, creates a reflection. I should have, you should see it Yeah, we place somewhere the sun there. over there. Yeah. So, we have flash. the sun over here. Yeah. And we have our beautiful model, Ken, here. So, if I have my reflector just like this, I can see that I'm hitting, the reflection is hitting Ken now. And if Anders is taking a picture. Yeah, bam. Bada bam. We should have a warm, edgy looking light. light. Okay. So the golden surface creates a really hard light since the reflection also will be a small reflection from the sunlight or from the sun, from the flashlight and a small Sun, uh, a small uh, source of light will create hard shadows because the penumbras will be really small. So you will have this hard light and warm, thanks Should to the warm the color. Sun silver? Let's do the sun silver. The sun silver one is a mix between silver and gold. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a mix. It's a pattern with the even and odd lines of silver versus gold. So if I do the same thing, we should have the same, the same light. Just got to find it. There we go. Yeah. But with a colder color to it. More sun-ish like. So now I'm shooting with the TTL. Yeah. Uh, just to make it easy. So here's the, the gold. And there's the sun silver. 
So you can see that the sun silver is more neutral and we are shooting at white balance, I think sun daylight, daylight like yeah. around 5,600 or so, yeah. I, would, I would say. Yeah. So let's use the next one, the silver one. Oops, there we go. We still will have the same kind of light, a hard light, since the reflection is, the reflection is a small light source. Uh, but now we will go even more neutral or let's say cold in this case. Let's see where we are at. There we are, I think. And we switch over. Let me see sun silver and silver. Yeah. Silver, sun silver and gold. Gold. So three sun different silver. levels of coldness. Let's, let's try white. Let's do the white one. Okay. Andres, may I take this one as white? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the white one, this is a diffused surface. This means that you will not have a small reflection. In other words, you will have a big reflection or a big light source. Big penumbra, so in other words, soft light. So this will create a much more soft light in a neutral color. Let's see where is light. There is light. I think we go there. Do you have any nose shadow to show when you... Not much. It's very... Yeah, possible to take it just a bit more from front. So you have some... You can see the... See any nose shadow? But the, we will not have any hard, yeah. no shadow. It's really soft. Should we do the same with the silver? Yeah, let's do it. Just to see the shadow from the nose. Let's do the nose thing. Yeah. And actually, I just must say that this silver surface isn't um, uh, shiny as a, uh, a mirror. It's, they, they it has some structure. One. Sorry? They only see capture one now. Yeah, OK, OK. <laughs> so here we go. Here we go. The, uh, let's see. There is oh. the nose. Okay, up a little bit. Cause, yeah, there you go. Outside the frame. And there we see a much sharper no uh, shadow. Yeah. Exactly. And if we compare, can you switch back to white? Can we take the mouse like this? This is the nose we're talking about. That shadow. Yeah. And from the silver. It's more defined, and that yeah, is because. And if we click here, we can even see. Yeah. yeah it doesn't have silver. any nose here. Cool. So, Anders, why the is the shadow more defined when using silver? Because that's a cool uh, thing, actually. Uh, the light source on a silver surface, similar to like a silver umbrella, it actually becomes smaller. Yeah. And. Uh, and it's good because you focus. You get all the photons and all the spaghetti, as we say into small spots, you get a little bit more power. Yeah, instead of the light going like this, like from a white reflection, boom, yeah. you get it more uh, direct like that. Yeah. More spaghetti is hitting your subject. In other words, it becomes brighter. Yeah. And what yeah. happens to the shadows, the levels of the shadows when you do this with the light from a silver Ooh, surface? Ooh, you get more contrast. Yeah, the, the shadows the go shadows darker. Get darker because they don't hit uh, any walls or ceilings. Or exactly. So the all the light from the other directions is gone. Yeah. In other words, you get darker shadows. So high contrast with silver, depending on what environment you have. Yeah. So why don't you set up a classical... Uh, uh, now, so now we've gone through gold, sun silver, uh, silver and white. Yeah. Uh, should we try a, um, a, a, a translucent? Translucent. Let's do a translucent. Yeah. Actually, let's do a translucent when the light is like this, when the light mimics the sun. But using it as a reflector, I mean. Yeah. Because this is ex exactly as the white one. It will let some light go through, but a lot of light is still going to reflect. So this yeah. is just like the white one. I want to see. Uh, I want six point one. So let's give that a try. Get a little bit of nose shadow. Bam. So the translucent one also, one also works as a reflector, a normal white, non-translucent uh, reflector. So that yeah. is kind of cool because that you can, you can use it in two ways. You will lose power, some power, 
but not much, maybe half of a stop or so. Yeah. And then, of course, the translucent one is really great if we do like this. Yes, yeah, so uh, for, imagine you're in Santorini, you, ha you have a strong sun, and then you want to uh, uh, soften that hard light that you get from the sun. Then the translucent umbrella or translu translucent collapsible reflector, reflector is really good. Yeah, if you take a picture now uh, with no, no diffusion. using no diffusion no at all. No translucent at all. Oh, Whoa. that was a really nasty one. Maybe one more, 6.5 here, so. Uh, let's try that. This is 5.5. Okay, anyway, you, s you clearly see that the yeah. shadows are really hard. The edges of the shadow under the nose are really, really hard, and that is, of course, again, because the light source is really small. Yeah. So if I put up the, this uh, diffusion material straight onto the flash, like this. This will not change the size of the light source. In other words, the shadows will not change at all. So, okay, so now you basically put it go back to the straight on the flash and you will not have... This means that the shadow edges will be the same. You might have a slight difference in contrast due to the the spread of the light hitting more walls, but the shadow edge will be the same. Yeah, you can see it here. Very sharp. Very sharp. So. And what do you do then? What I do, I enlarge the light source just by backing up the diffusion. Okay, so just you move like it away that. from. I move it away from because then more will be laid up and in other words, create a big light source. So here we have a really, really soft light Okay. from this uh, diffusion material. And if this was the sun now, we would have the same effect or even, even softer. So if you look at the shadow edge now, you will see that it is a lot more yeah, here. soft. And, and part of it is almost gone compared to this whole, this whole part here. I mean, we are not moving the light source, so and so that's the uh, diffusion uh, really close, or the collapsible, ref the translucent re reflector close, and we move it away. Yeah. You can clearly see the difference there. Exactly. Cool. So that was the diffusion. That, yes. that works in two ways, either as a reflector or as a diffuser in front of your sun or your uh, light source. So a lot of people do clamshells. Yes. That's very popular. A lot of people do clamshells uh, and uh, they are actually using reflectors when doing clamshells. So yeah. let's do that. Let's make a classical clamshell lighting. First we do a butterfly light when the, the shadow under the nose is shaped like a butterfly like this. <laughs> now it's more like a butt yes. butterfly <laughs> in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <coughs> There, I got it. <laughs> uh, let's take a picture without anything, just to see where we are at. Actually, no camera, no nothing. Just take a picture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, okay, with the camera. <laughs> Let me just tweak the forehead and chin there, just to see where we are at. And this is at 5.5 now, and it went to uh, 4.5. Let's go to manual, and let's pop it down. One F stop is probably enough. About there, okay. So I switch over to capture one. So this we is the normal butterfly. Yeah, the butterfly. Often people think that this creates too much shadow on uh, over the eyes, and the yeah, eyes do not. The eye, there you, have, you don't have any reflection in the eyes, and they can look kind of dead. And also under the chin, can under be the chin, too exactly, much. and especially if you have a chin or a, a neck. It can be yeah. really, really dark. And then people tend to put in the reflector, a silver reflector. Why? Yeah, well, I think it's because people think that the silver one is more... Silver is cool. It's cool because it's brighter or so, something like that. And of course, it will work. You will have a reflection from below that will create uh, some light from below that will fill your shadows. So this, I would say, is the typical clamshell setup with a silver reflector from below. 
so and you do get without, brighter shadows. Yeah. And take a look at the, the reflection on the under in the iris on the lower part because that is kind of key for uh, um, yeah. a clamshell that you get that reflection. But I think I think that when you use a silver reflector as a reflector from below, it almost gets a bit too the shadows are a bit too bright. It can be too bright. It depends on what material you have, of course. But I think that if you use a white one instead, then you would have less aimed, le less direct light, which will create a weaker light. In other words, your shadows will be a bit darker, but you will still have the reflection from below and actually a bigger reflection since the white reflector will become a bigger light source. So I th think that often white is better than silver to reflect from below. So there's the silver and there's the white. Yeah. So let's see where we are at. You can see that the reflection in the eye also is a uh, uh, lot more, it's darker. Yeah, it's, it's not, not as, as it's, it's not as, you know, it doesn't look like a flash from below. Yeah. It just pop, pop the iris from below. There's a, yeah, there's a little bit in the iris, yeah. you can see that at, yeah. the, at the bottom end. That's nice. Yeah, so if you switch between the silver and the white, just mm -hmm. to see the level of silver? light in reflection, look under the nose, that is where I'm looking. Under yeah. the nose, brightness from the silver, I think it's too bright. The, the, the bottom of the nose gets a little bit too much light, but with the white one, it's a bit tad darker. darker yeah and doesn't feel so much like a fill light. It's, it's just there. It's yeah. just more controlled, uh, I think. That's cool. And of course, it's all a matter of taste. If you want to have that silver look, yeah. it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I mean, as long as you're happy, that's, that's great. Exactly. Uh, another thing that people do quite often, you have a, if you set a short light, Yeah and uh, then maybe this side is too dark yeah and, and they use the reflectors to fill exactly do a fill and light. then you i mean oh well you have the white one there i do i, I mean i i admit i i this is me yeah the opposite i you think you place it exactly opposite. because you see a shadow there and yeah. i think that many people think that oh there's a shadow let's light into the shadow on oh. the opposite way from this light source to eliminate the shadow. And so let's take a look how that looks like. Yeah, let's take a look how that looks. Am I in frame or no? No, not in frame. So the opposite way from the light source will create this look of the fill light. Yes. And if we, I mean, again, this is a matter of taste, what mm -hmm. you like and what you do not like, uh, but the, for me, this is a clear situation where you have tried to fill the shadows. For me, it screams, a photographer wants, wants to fill the shadow. It's really, really obvious that you have something white over here. And this dark line that goes on the forehead, down on the, on the cheek, down here, that really tells me that you have a fill light from coming from right. And that line can actually look cool. I, I, I don't say that there is anything wrong with it, but you should be aware of that when you are filling from the opposite side of your light source, yeah, it so will be quite line. obvious that you are just doing a fill. So if you want to be more natural looking, you know, not as, um, so you don't get what the feeling that a man that? is or a woman is uh, lighting it artificially. I would, I am always trying to put my fill light from the same direction as the, the, the main light source. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's po impossible to do it from the exactly the same direction, but more frontal. So instead of doing like this, yeah, I try, me. yeah, that's you, this yeah, is you. Me. <laughs> I try to go in more and more frontal like that. So I get the, still get the reflection, <laughs> still get the reflection, but the direction is more from the front. So this will go into darkness. I don't want the brightest park part on the back of his head. I want it to, to fall into darkness. So let's see where I am at. I am maybe here. Okay, I'll take a shot. 
we see what happens. Yeah. Did you have the think you have got to have about the same angle? Well, that will work just fine if you compare yes, it to yeah. the last one. Yeah, there you can see that the fill light is more wrapping around because it's coming coming from the front, not in fr not from the back. So there's not too much of this dark line that you see when I do it, and this is when you do it. There's no not a dark line. Exactly. There's no separation between bright and dark, and then bright again. There is more. It's more wrapping around. Yeah. And the key here is to fill as much as you can from the front, and I know that this isn't. There isn't. There isn't many people doing this. So instead of going like this, you are moving it. Yeah, exactly. I'm moving it so the light comes forward and going yeah. back. Then you will have a more n n uh, neutral uh, transition from the flash to the fill that goes into darkness. Cool. It wraps around. And, and if you are in a uh, smaller studio yeah. and, uh, and you have white walls and uh, I'm taking this shot this will be totally washed out with no contrast, yeah. uh, very, very light. Exactly. Because, because and that's when you use the this black guy. flag. The black flag is perfect to, to el uh, eliminate the, the light coming from the walls, just to punch up those shadows to get more direction really to the face dark. so we can really feel what is going backwards in the image and going towards the camera. So you get more three dimensionality. And actually, I use the black flags a lot for, not flags, the black uh, collapsible reflector. When you are outside, when you have these overcast days, mm -hmm. then you can Ooh, shape, yeah, yeah, you yeah. shape the light so you still get this really three-dimensional three Because yeah, then uh, you have pick. light from everywhere with this yeah. big softbox called exactly. sky and the clouds. Exactly. So there, that's when the, the deflector, really cool. it's called the deflect, you're deflecting the light. You're, yeah. You are removing light from all directions to shape your light in much, in, in a re you can get a super nice, super soft light. And using you can, of course, you can also use it as a background. Of course, you can if use you do it. a headshot. Actually, you know, the pro photo, all the pro photo um, uh, uh, product images I do for the, all the, all the stuff, all the cartons. Yes. Oh, the, the uh, boxes. All the boxes. Yeah, yeah the exactly. Boxes. That is the background there. The, 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 black. the black thing, the, yeah. the, the light is actually shot on one of these. Ooh, yeah, so nice. this uh, uh, it's just a black collapsible reflector where I put the light on to create a halo around the product. Oh. So I think black is really nice to use as backgrounds yeah. to create those halos. There is actually one thing we have to mention. I see a lot of people, especially in the film and television industry, news industry, they have the sun outside and they are standing there with a lovely golden collapsible reflector from below like this and just trying to eliminate eliminate the shadows by lighting in yellow golden light with a really small light source which will create new sharp shadow edges so it's really really obvious what you're doing so please don't do this because this looks like shit <laughs> okay shit <laughs> don't do this if you have to use the golden it actually, uh, I think it's a kind of nice uh, kicker light to create a kicker light. If you have some sunlight, some, some uh, parts in the nature lit by sun in the back, so you can see that you do have a warm sun, this will act, this will do a nice kicker. But otherwise, I think the, for me, I think the golden is way too golden. The gold, the silver, well, what's the word for it? The sun, sun silver. silver. The yeah. sun silver is more, is more um, neutral and not so extreme. Cool. Yeah. Let's go take a seat and uh, see if we have any any questions. Yes. Um, let's take a let's take a snooze. Uh, sure, there's a whole bunch. Uh, do, 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 where are we? Oh wow. Uh, is there? Oh, is there much difference between the beauty dish and the two-foot octabox with the two layers of diffusion? The biggest difference is the contrast, because when you have a round light source <coughs> uh, with a diffusion on, the light will spread out like this, almost 180 degrees, which in turn will light up all your walls, ceiling and floor. 
and they will light your shadows. So when you have a beauty dish, that is also you also have a kind of big um, light pattern. I mean, the, the light is kind of wide, but not as wide as with diffusion. Yeah. So if you are on a football field without any walls, you actually won't see uh, much that much of yeah. a difference at all, yeah. because then you won't have that contrast issue, which you do have when you have a diffusion, uh, an octabox with diffusion on. Yeah. Where do we get the wall mounts? Uh, well, they are custom made 100 millimeter uh, metal cylinders. And then we have a screw into the wall. So it's basically finding something that's uh, 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters or... Uh, 1,000 micrometers. Yeah, exactly, 1,000 <laughs> micrometers. <laughs> it's almost the same. <laughs> uh, and, and then just screw it into the wall. That's uh, how we did it. Yeah, and if you have a 3D printer, I'm sure you can find some ways to do it really easy. Just yep. 1,000 micrometers and print it out this high and screw it on the wall and you're home. Okay. Uh, oh, so then a the question about the uh, beauty dishes, uh, white or silver? Oh, the white Ooh. or silver, it's still about the contrast. Yeah. When you have a silver beauty dish, your light rays will go much more forward. You will have less light coming from the walls, in other words, darker shadows. And since you have more light coming forward, more photons will actually hit your subject. In other words, they will become brighter. And when they become brighter, you have to change the power of the flash or the exposure of the camera. And you think that you will have a longer depth of field, for example, just because you have a brighter light. Yeah. So there is so much confusion about the silver and the white one because it, it, of course it changes the look since you get more power. Uh, but it's all about the rays, where do they go? To the sides or to the front? And from the silver, more to the front, and with the white, more to the sides. Yeah. Yeah. We got a question if, if Profoto makes a collapsible diffuser with the useful handles. Yes, uh, there's a medium and a large version of the, uh, the, the collapsible, or it's called a translucent. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it, it is uh, diffusion. Uh, more Pro photo spaghettis at the same direction. Yeah, exactly. So we like pro photo spaghetti. <laughs> Actually, we do have a pack of pro photo spaghetti in the. Yeah. You still there. save them. I d yeah, I do. So we use them for demonstration purposes. And since we're not sponsored by any spaghetti maker, we just put black tape yeah, on Yeah, we don't want to give anyone any. Oh, extra. no, free advertising. No, 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 since no, we're, no. Such <laughs> we're such big, uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, influencer <laughs> yeah. bloggers with millions and millions yeah, of it's, followers. It's really like expensive <laughs> to have <laughs> us say Barilla or something like that. Oh, you Oops. did it. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a we, we had a, got a question from, from Matthias yeah. Sulan Sulander, Mr. Reckless. Yeah. Uh, he says, would be so cool to hear a little about throne shadows and self shadows. And uh, I don't know if we, we can go into that now, but no. you know any episode where we talk about that? Because we, it's we, we, really important. Yeah. You have to know the difference between those two kinds of shadows, throne shadows and self shadows. If you don't know the difference, you won't know what you are doing. So you need to know that. And I'm not allowed to talk about that because then Anders will hit me with his elbow. We got like seven minutes left. Oh, yeah. And you have more t yes, than seven minutes to okay. talk about those shadows. Okay. A thrown shadow, that is the <laughs> shadow that's thrown, <laughs> and a self-shadow is created by the object itself. Exactly. itself. But there's so much more. Yeah, there is so yeah. much more, and important. E exactly. And we, we'll, we'll make, we promise, we will talk about shadows a lot more. Yeah. Uh, any tips when you take pictures outside with snow? Oh. In general, I, I have experienced that it's slightly colder, a bluer light, so that you, I mean, you can compensate with your ba white balance in the camera. You mean like, so the light that is, the sun is shining on the snow, it will become more blue compared to or, the flash? Or, or it maybe it's just a Swedish thing that, that since the sun never goes up, it's just like blue hour type of sunlight that I'm shooting in. Yeah, I actually read some numbers about the, oh the word, it's a nice word for when the earth is the amount of light Earth is, oh, I forgot the word. Well, there is a color of snow that is, you know, uh, it has a defined color and I do not recall it to be bluer. I think the scientific definition of it was true, super yeah. neutral. Yeah. So I think it's the blue sky you get reflections from there, or the blue hour thing. Yeah, exactly. Which is the blue sky. Yeah. 
do, 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 do. Uh, when I use a, a white umbrella there uh, and there have a, a B1 in the center, it, it, will that make the center of the light pattern a bit darker? Oh, oh, so you have a white yeah. umbrella and then... No, you, no, it will not. And the reason for that is that you have a thrown shadow. <laughs> the shadow from the B1, it will mathematically cast a shadow. But so here's an umbrella? Yeah, is okay, the, the, okay, then here's the B1. Yeah. So the umbrella, the light source is bigger than the, than the B1. This will create shadow edges from the B1 that is stretched out so much that they will intersect in the middle and they will disappear. Yeah. So you will not have any shadow from the B1. Unless you shoot something like yeah, one of centimeter course. right behind. Of course, exactly yeah. right, right behind. But, but actually, if you, if you are standing like this, looking into the B1, yeah. or the B10, sorry, the B10, and so you don't see the umbrella because you, are, you have it in your eye. And when you move your eye further away, when you're starting to see the umbrella on all sides, yeah, that's the distance. That is the, the exact position of where you get the antumbra, and that is where the shadow edges are intersecting in the middle, and you will have a brighter spot in the middle. And when they are equally wide on each side, boom, no more shadow. Yeah. So you won't have any shadow there, no. And it looks like we helped Mark a little bit. Uh, so much easier to shoot through a translucent reflector than uh, a shoot through umbrella outdoors. Thank you for showing me the light. Awesome. We're always happy when we can help. Uh, how would you light a portrait in black and white when only half the face is, light, is lit and then the dark half you can only see a small light in the eye? eye. Well, how do Oh, oh, yeah. So like if, if we would set, let's say do a Rembrandt, for example, yeah. with the little triangle and the eye is completely dark and then you still see the little reflection in the eye. Yeah, well... Um, you try to remove that reflection. Well, I would say that if you see a reflection in the eye, that means that the eye sees the light source. Yeah. So if you want to have the reflection, it's all about placing your light really, really, really delicate. And you will have a spot where the, the opposite's eye will see the light source. In other words, you will have a reflection there, a small, small reflection. But the more you go, it will grow into brightness over here and your reflection will become even bigger. So I would say that on the edge of where, th where this part is totally dark, the, the, the position where you still have a reflection is really, really small distance from your flash. If you do like five centimeters like that, it will, it will go away. Yep. Because the nose will actually cut off the... It is the nose that are... Sorry to point at your face. <laughs> it is the nose that is creating the dark part, the dark yep. side like that. But if the light still... If you can still see the light, if the eye bulb, is that the yeah. word, the eyeball, yeah. uh, still get reflection, you can still have it totally dark here, but have a small, small, small reflection in the eye. But when the light is coming over, it's going to get brighter, and then you will have a big reflection. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if, know if yeah. that was the explanation or uh, answer to that question, but it was yeah, but fun so basically to talk say, about. If, if, how, if you, how would you lit, lit the portrait? Then you would basically move the move it a little bit back, and then the, the reflection would disappear. If he wants yeah. it to be to or disappear. Or move it further out to make it even more. Yeah, clear. and it's all about precision and the light is hidden behind the nose, uh, the, the bridge of the nose. Yeah. That is the, what is blocking your light from the other side of the face. Yeah. One last question then. Why silver umbrella make mul multiple shadows? Depends on the silver umbrella, what silver umbrella. But if yeah. you have a silver umbrella that is creating multiple shadows, that is because you have multiple light sources in your silver umbrella. Yeah. Each of these, the, the cake cones, how do you explain that? Yeah, the, the, the stripes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the pizza Those slices. things, pizza slices. If they are, um, how do you say this in English? You know, bulbia. Um, yeah, not straight. Yeah, cool, if they yeah. are like, not, if they are not straight, if they are uh, sloped like this, you will have reflections on each side of the slope and each reflection will create will be a new light source that yeah. will create new shadow edges so if you have a perfect umbrella the whole umbrella is lit up even though it's silver or not yeah. but as soon as the umbrella is not perfect let's say that you aren't uh, expanding it enough or if the umbrella is old and you know getting sloppy and all those sides are starting to get saggy then you get those multiple light sources in other words multiple shadow edges. And what to do? Then you can 
put diffusion on it? Put it put a diffusion on, yeah. And I actually what I would do, the first thing to do is you have to be aware of how you how your light source look. If you have a light source, you you take a picture into your light source with your flash into the light source and change the position of your of your light source, your, your flash, and see how that changes your light source, the umbrella. Yeah. In a certain position, maybe it's better. Maybe you have less of those multiple light sources inside. That is your sweet spot. So do like this, take a lot of pictures and learn how your light sources look. Yeah. We had uh, John Keyes continuing on the portrait, uh, the dark portrait. Okay. Uh, would you use a grid? Uh, for, it has for nothing to do with that, exactly. Yeah, because it, 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 it won't make any difference. No. Uh, the only, well, like it could be a small difference. You might actually be able to see the grid in the reflection. Yeah. That's the only thing. that. So I would say no. Yeah, because the grid, yeah. the, the only thing the grid do, it removes the light that goes in these directions instead of that. Yeah. You still have the same light going forward yeah. with or without the grid. But if you have walls over here, yeah. they will be lit up and fill your shadows. So the grid controls your contrast nothing else and yeah. of course your, your uh, light image where the light will hit but if you want to use a grid for making that part darker and that part bright that is not the way to go I would say yeah. Joel hello welcome Joel. finally you're late we know that but we know that you also look at these when we repost them and uh, they, are, they will be available yeah and John said yeah concave yeah exactly so thank you yeah Thank you so much for helping us out when our language skills are yes. failing. But we uh, are Swedish, yes. uh, as you probably Bear know. Bear with so us. So every now and then we do miss up uh, some words. Yes. But now I think it's time for uh, the, uh, probably the coolest David Bishop trick ever. <laughs> Uh, it's my party the, trick. It's my party <laughs> it's trick. Part. Yeah, that's yeah. how you 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 yeah, uh, how you get new friends. Yeah. So that's uh, how I met my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you showed her this trick, and she's like, "Wow, I gotta have yeah, that guy." Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so there are a few reflectors from other manufacturers that are really big. Yeah, really big. Really big, uh, and they can be a hassle to uh, uh, collapse. Collapse. There's some taco versions and there's a lot of uh, different ways of doing it but I think this one is uh, probably the coolest. Yeah and I know there is a lot of tutorials on the web how to fold those really really big collapsible reflectors and I got a lot of questions about how to do that but I didn't want to do it as everyone else so I made it behind the yeah. back. How to collapse a really big collapsible reflector behind your back. Uh -huh. And. Uh, and it, it's in, in step instructions. Yes, so really six steps, I think. Yeah, six steps. So you can follow. Yeah. So let's take a quick look at that. Yep. Uh, and here are how to fold it behind your back. <laughs> step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and, and most importantly, step six. Straight arms. Very, very important. Very important. You cannot, you can't do it with, with, <laughs> with you know, with arms bent. Like yeah, no, you have no, to have no them straight. style points no. if you if you don't no. do that. The straight uh, arms is, is key. <laughs> and, and for those of you who want to see this over and over again, like me, uh, just go over to David Bischoff's, uh, just put in David Bischoff on YouTube and and uh, find his channel, and and you will. Uh, I think it's on my web, web page too. Web as well. Yeah. .se <laughs> under. It is a pretty cool trick, though, I must uh, admit <laughs> that, so. Anywho, yeah. everybody, thank you so much for a uh, great session. Love you guys so much. Uh, thank you for showing up every uh, Wednesday. Yep. Uh, next Wednesday, I think uh, there will be a, uh, uh, a wedding uh, theme. A wedding theme? Yeah, so Ooh. we might have a wedding photographer here Ooh. and as a guest. Mm -hmm. So we have to behave. We have to behave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, so uh, wedding will be the uh, topic, uh, wedding photography. So do uh, show up and come loaded with a lot of questions. We have uh, 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 not about weddings, but about wedding photography. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we'll we, uh, and we'll have an expert here to help us answer perfect all the questions. Cool. And there might be a challenge to you actually. A challenge? Yeah. May, will I know it before in advance uh, or? Depends not? on how you behave. Okay. Yeah. I will it buy you a Samla. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much.
keep on posting questions under here in the comments and we will get back to them and respond and yeah. answer. Yeah. So, uh, and, and uh, I think later tonight or tomorrow, uh, this will also be on the YouTube channel for those of you who want to see it in two different social media channels. Exactly. Exactly the same thing, but yeah. on YouTube. Have you ever tried to watch them at the same time with one with oh, stereo? Different stereo? Oh, that's, cool. that's interesting. Uh, Maybe we should do a three D version. We do one for the right eye, <laughs> and on YouTube on the left for the left eye, <laughs> yeah. and, and, so and on. Just with two yeah. different cameras, exactly. yeah, <laughs> offset them a little bit. <laughs> Anywho, thank you so much bye for bye. just rambling. Till next Wednesday, bye bye. Do you want to learn how to mix flash with ambient light? In this course, we scrap all the unnecessary, overwhelming information that you see online today. Here's what you actually need to start mixing flash with ambient light. My name is David Bishop. I am the light shaping expert at Profoto Academy. In this course, you will learn the three-step process of exposure, how to add flash to improve existing light conditions, how to create motivated light. The three-step process breaks down how you easily set the camera for perfect exposure in difficult conditions when mixing flash with ambient light. Adding flash to improve existing conditions. How can you enhance existing conditions with flash, with a natural feel? Creating motivated lights. How you can use the background to light your picture in a natural way. So join me in this course and I will show you how to get started today, no matter what equipment you are using.